Everyone, I'm Franz, and this is Lars, and we're here in Hawthorne at the Design Studio, we're standing in front of an all-new Model 3. And behind us, we have you know, some other top secret stuff, but uh, maybe we'll get to that another day. We're actually here to talk about the Model 3, so we're excited to see your questions, and uh, hopefully we can give you a little insight into you know, some things beneath the skin and some technical stuff. Yeah, under, under the skin? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is uh, our first. No, it's our second Tesla live stream, so bear with us. The first one, my, my colleague Wes did straight from Baja. This one's got a little bit higher uh, Wi-Fi signal, so we should be okay. But Franz, I think this first one's maybe for you, or you could take it. Uh, what is your favorite or most exciting change with the upgraded new Model 3? Well, I think the, the most exciting thing for me is we've taken a, a great car and just made it a little bit better. Actually, a lot better. Yeah, a lot better. Um, some of my favorite elements on the car are the front end. We've got a whole new front end going on here, and um, it's just really a lot leaner. The hood is new hood. It's down low. Obviously, brand new lights. We've simplified the front end even further, and it just really gives the car a little bit more sleek feel to it, a little more mature as well. Uh, the car's grown up a bit. And this is a, you know, a pretty big contributor to the overall uh, aero efficiency For sure. improvement that we've yeah. had on the car. And then in the rear of the car, if we go back here, one of my favorite features actually is how we've treated the taillights. And we've basically taken the taillights and we've added them now to the deck lid. And so now you don't have that kind of really bad seam in the middle of the taillight. It's an improvement in design of the original Model 3, so it's just a nice evolution of that, but it feels more crisp, more precise, more modern, and no part lines in it, so super excited yeah, about that. But the part lines and the finish up front, it's a big step up in quality. Yeah. I mean, the, the Fremont team's been kicking butt for the last couple of years, and the one of the things I'm most excited about is how much higher the quality is, not just in the fit and finish and the build quality, but also the materials we'll talk about later inside. Yeah, I mean, we took the chance to not just improve the design and the handling and the performance of the car, but also to improve the overall quality. Um, and I think you'll see that when you see the car in person. Should you take another one? This is probably you too. You talked about it for a minute, but how does the new exterior really improve aerodynamics? Yeah, we talked about it just a second ago. I think in the front end, you know, lowering the nose, getting um, the profile and the, the plan curve of the front end just a little bit more efficient, allows the air to flow up and around and over the car a little bit better. And we also improved the, the okay. rear diffuser down right down at the bottom of the car. And just you know, a few millimeters here and there really makes a big improvement uh, in the way that you push this vehicle through the air and the way the air travels around it. We've got updated wheels as well. These are 19-inch mm -hmm. wheels shown here. And, and the tires. These little black pieces here, they actually contribute quite a quite a bit to the overall um, aero efficiency of the wheel itself. It allows the, the air to slip around the tire rather than getting caught up in um, all the blades of it. So, What's really cool about those from an engineering perspective is when, when we think about wheel and tire design and aerodynamics, it's really like how can we get the air to go around, like you said. Yeah. But when you get bigger and bigger wheels, it gets harder and harder to do because like the surface of the wheel comes out. And when I think about those caps, I think about it making the the air think the wheel is smaller. And you know, and, and then the air can go quicker around the outside. But yeah, like you said, as the wheel gets bigger, the profile of the tire gets smaller. And what we've done is actually brought the overall profile back into kind of effectively what the wind sees as the tire profile. So the tire profile from the wind perspective feels really thick, but it's actually and even, a nice big wheel. Even this little thing right here, a lot of tires, you know, will swoop out here or they'll or they'll like dip in right at the corner and tuck in under the wheel. We have this coming straight back and it actually flips up just a half a millimeter or so and that keeps that air attached when you go around the corner. Also saves you from the curb. It does save right. you from the curb just a little bit. Um, let's take another one. We're, since we're talking about wheels and tires, someone actually asked, how does the new wheel and tire design increase overall range? Well, there you go, yeah. We talked about that on the wheel side, but on the tire side, it's even cooler. These tires have a lower roll rolling resistance coefficient than any of the other tires we've ever put on a Model 3 but we did that without compromising uh, lateral performance, steering response. And one of the ways we did that- Isn't that the hardest thing though? Like <laughs> combining you know, rolling resistance and performance? Dude, Franz, you know me in tires. Like I could talk about them for days, but like it is the most important thing on the car. It's the only thing that touches the ground and it has to do everything. It has to be quiet, it has to be yeah. comfortable, it has to do aero. But you'd think like performance goes one metric one way, 
rolling resistance the other way? How yeah. did you do that? I mean, that's a good question. So specifically speaking, those two aspects of a tire occur in different frequencies. And so by changing the compound of the tire, we can actually achieve grip, which actually occurs at a pretty low frequency, or versus rolling resistance being low at a high frequency. And to do that, we look at the what's called the damping curve, which is the tan delta of it. And basically, we shift the curve through the compound to increase grip while decreasing rolling resistance. And that's a lot in compounding. The other thing we did pretty impressive. <laughs> is we lowered the top speed. And you know, people are yeah. like, oh, blow, why did you do that? You took away 15 miles per hour. Well, we know from our data, people don't drive that fast. Right. But what it allowed us to do was re reduce the number of ply overlays in the belt uh, and the shoulder area of the tire. Which, because you know, when tires are rolling and spinning at high speed, it's got to like, hold all that yeah. in. And by reducing that speed, we're able to take out one ply, which again reduces the energy the tire is using to, 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 to get down the road. Super cool stuff going yeah, on that tire. Great. We talk a lot about how we have F1 engineers in Aero. Yeah. I just want to point out our lead tire designer is also, also an F1 engineer. <laughs> that is true. I mean, Lars mentioned that. Right in our studio, the, on the other side of the wall, we have a lot of um, former F1 engineers working together with our designers to just help us with the aerodynamics and improve the overall efficiency. And efficiency is you know, what equates to better overall like livability of the product. Uh, yeah. You can go farther on the charge, et cetera. Let's take another one, yeah? Yeah. Let's see what we got. I'm on the, uh, so what has changed in the exterior design of the Model 3 rear-wheel drive? I think you but, talked a little yeah, bit about I that. I think we but, talked about that, but we um, can hit it again. You know, I think the front end, we've got new fascias in the front, new headlights, new taillights, um, a new hood as well. And again, that just leads to um, you know, a, a little bit more of a mature looking front end. The car looks sleeker. You know, one of the original ideas of the Model 3 was just to be like 5% smaller and much more affordable yep. than a, our other great car, the Model S. Super great car. And so this kind of brings it even more into that vein of feeling like a you know, smaller, more attainable, um, but equally mature and proficient vehicle um, than the Model S. Well, one of the things you always get me on since the day I started working here was this air to tire gap and the yeah. side to side gap. True. And all those tires. Stance. It's all about it's stance. Got to be stance yeah. man. And all those tire improvements we talked about, we we're also actually able to reduce that tire gap, which not only helped efficiency, but makes it look a lot cooler. I agree. And again, <laughs> the, the stance of the car is, is you know, just improved. The car just sits better when you see it from the front or from the rear. Just has this great kind of, um, you know, feeling on the road, and you get the muscular portion of the front fenders and the rear fenders over the tires. It just feels really tight and taut. See another one? Yes. Yeah, Try and keep it going. Um, what are your top priorities when designing such a vehicle and why? Is it to me? Is that you? Uh, why don't you take this okay. one? <laughs> um, for me, it's always about, it starts with safety. I mean, I think I've talked about it from time to time, but we think about safety in every step of the design. Um, and, and, that, and that relates even all the way back to when you're designing it, when yep. we talk about pedestrian protection yep. or how, how the crumple zones work in the front. But once off to become off safety, for me, it's customer happiness. You know, and I think one thing we do great here at Tesla that not everyone does is we listen. Like we really listen yeah. to what people have to say, not just in the design, but on the inside. You know, we made it quieter, we made it more efficient. We, we improved the ride comfort without sacrificing the handling. And those were all feedback from the, our customers. You know. and, that, and that didn't make the car look worse. Actually, we were able to make the car look better. That's we magic. All new, all new interior. Um, which and the premiumness, really. Yeah, we up the premium. We, we, and, and you know, we are packaging in all those things that make you safe as an occupant. The airbags mm -hmm. everywhere in the car. Yeah. Um, it, the restraint systems. And it, they don't feel like they're encumbering you or making the car worse. They, we really, I think we do a good job working together. Our teams really yeah. do a good job making that all work. Um, of course, the other thing is the best accident is no accident. True. Sure. And this is coming now with our fourth version of our autopilot yep. system, higher resolution cameras. Um, but what that also means is our active safety systems are even better than they were before, um, which is pretty cool. Should we keep going? Yeah, let's go. Next one. What are oh, some so of the active <laughs> safety features of the car? Well, there we go. Look at that. I, yeah. I honestly <laughs> didn't know that was the next one. <laughs> um, so they all come standard. This is one of the questions here. Do they come standard um, or customers need to pay for them? We believe safety comes first, and that means all of our cars get every safety feature we can think of. That means lane keeping, side collision assist, automatic emergency braking. Back in December, we launched cross-traffic emergency braking. So when you get those features with a Tesla, you're really getting something more than what, what other people have. Um, you know, I, a lot of people like to say, well, my car has automatic and emergency braking. But all automatic emergency braking is not the same. With sure. our awesome autopilot system and with the camera that we use, 
we can actually see farther left and right and stop more cross traffic events than most other people. And what's even cooler is we're continuing to look at the data as it comes in. So if we find a hole in our system, we update it. Yeah, we improve it. When you buy someone else's car, whatever you get is what you get. Yeah. All right, I'll get the next one. Okay. Is the, is the true that the battery pack is built to enhance the safety features in the car? Well, I would say yes is a simple answer, but the reality is the battery is an integral part of the structure of the car. We all know it's sitting down low right here. It's really between the rocker here and the floor. Um, it, it helps us really with the backup structure of our safety systems. You know, it provides a stiff like object as well as transferring energy through the battery pack to absorb all of those frontal crash energies, but it also makes it stiffer in torsion. Yeah, what, what, what is that torsional rigidity? What, why is that important? So, yeah, it's a good question. I talk about that a lot, but when you're in a car and you sort of want it to respond, it's about how the load transfers from that initial steering response on the outside wheel all the way through the car to the back. And if you can imagine it as like a series of individual things attached together, the stiffer they're attached, you know, if you had a really big piece of steel, that response from the front to the rear axle would be super quick. On the other hand, if you twisted a piece of paper, it would take a long time for that back, and it might never happen. And so that torsional rigidity not only makes the car feel, you know, more responsive, but it also adds this sort of solid, you know, kind of luxury feeling to the car that you get a lot of thudding and, and you know, when you're hitting impacts and stuff. So it's a critical thing we always look at. And I mean, you feel it when you drive this car. This for sure. car just One feels of the first really you solid, feel. it's quiet, it just feels really stiff. It feels like if the body doesn't have to do any work because the suspension The suspension's is doing all the work, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Going on on this, we got another question. Can you explain the platform safety architecture? So we're talking a little bit about that. I think, you know, when I think about safety at Tesla, I think that it comes first in our design, the best accidents, no accident, and then we've been talking about this data-driven approach. But I think moreover than that, like we have an architecture that, that allows for like a really, with the battery, as we were describing, a really you know, isolated, rigid occupant cabin. And then all of our energy during an accident is absorbed up here in the front. And then we, we also protect you from the side. The door structure on the new Model 3 is actually a result of our field data and um, trying to improve side impact by, by uh, you know, looking at accidents that occurred in the field and realizing that, you know, one thing we can't stop too often is somebody hitting you. Right. And so we really wanted to improve that. It's really got a great door structure for that. So, I mean, it's really all about protecting the occupant, and I think it goes, you know, goes all over the car. Franz does a good job helping us with that. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't know by looking at this that it's got a massive crumple zone, and it's even got like 120 millimeters of extrusion in the side, yeah. in the side of the uh, battery pack there just to absorb energy. Again, it's important to know that you're inherently safe. It's the lowest probability of injury in yeah. any cars in a Tesla. So why would you put your kids in why. anything I, else, right? It's all my family drives. But you know, I think it's a lot of the, the effort from the team to get to a great looking car that is also the safest car. Yeah, I mean, I think people drive products because they, you know, they want them to look good. And I think that you know, they also want them to be safe. Yeah. And so we want to make both of those things happen. That's like your priority and yeah. my priority. Yeah. <laughs> um, Quite another we, question. We put our families in them too. Yeah, so. exactly. All right, let's keep going. Will it qualify for the tax credit in the near future? Well, I guess I can be a salesman for a minute. <laughs> uh, current Model 3 starts at $38,990. Um, we, we actually have a lease that, uh, price that starts about three twenty nine per month, and that when you lease a car, we now have in, uh, that credit of $7,500 um, that is incentive that's distributed over that payment, so you're getting money back every yep. time you're paying it. So it does qualify at that base price. Um, and really, like, you know, that's something we're always working on is trying to work within the countries we work in, not just the U.S., but in China and Europe and making them locally to really try and promote the economy and, and you know, qualify for whatever incentives those regions are offering. Yeah. And, and we listened to you guys, the customers, and you know, we took it to heart and we tried to make the interior space just much more premium. So I think even at this price point, you're getting an incredibly, you know, premium vehicle with ultra suede and new textiles and just, you know, updated seats. Um, it's, a, it's an all new interior and it uh, kind of takes the theme of the original Model 3 and just improves on it. And I mean, I think this all speaks to the next question we got, which is why is it important that these cars are as affordable as possible? It's the mission. Yeah, yeah. mission, exactly. I mean, we came here, Franz, 15, 16 years ago, yeah. me a year behind you, and like the mission has always been to democratize the EV. How do we get more of these cars into people like you's hands and, and really just like, I think the first thing you have to do is make a great car. Make a great car, make it affordable. That's it. Two things, yeah. really. So, um, 
This one's a really detailed question. You should take it. Okay. Uh, I'll read it and you go ahead. All right. We're curious about the battery details in the upgraded Model 3. Between performance, rear-wheel drive, long range, are we looking at 2170s, LFPs, 4680? I mean, this is really a question <laughs> for you, I think. But um, I'll go. That's fine. I'll take it. Uh, well, we have all the different kinds of uh, batteries in our pack and our vehicles across the globe. Our standard range Model 3s come with LFP, lithium iron phosphate batteries. That means you can charge all the way up. We do that because, you know, at that lower price point, um, we want to make sure that you can use the, the full range of the battery every day. It's up to 272 miles now. And I think that one thing that's important is, you know, in the, in the rest of the world, people, when this came, car came out, were like, oh, the range went up 10%. Yeah. In the U.S., it only went up, well, in the case of real drive, nothing. In the case of dual motor, just a, a few miles. But at Tesla, we focused on real, wor real rate, world range, right? And if you look at our fleet efficiency, like which we monitor, the fleet efficiency of this car is actually 10% more. Um, there were some changes in the EPA testing protocol that they're really trying, and I appreciate it. They're really trying to make real world range and the sticker match better and better. Yeah. Um, and so our sticker ranges didn't go up as much as the other regions, but the actual efficiency is 10% more. So yeah. that delta between that number and what you get is gonna be less in this car than it ever was before. I think it's important to, to, to note that, you know, we have an incredible supercharging network too. So, you know, I think, there's, there's almost nowhere in the United States where you can't reach a supercharger. No, definitely not. Um, especially with 272 miles of range. So um, I think as you know, we continue to expand our network, then you know, ultimately range becomes less of a thing. You're never going to be stranded. Actually, with our you know, amazing UI, we always guide you to a supercharger before you ever get stranded anyway. So. I don't know about you, but since I've driven a Tesla, I get like an hour back out of my life. Yeah. Really, because you, know, you don't have to go to the gas station once a week, you know, spend a hundred bucks. So it's, it's kind of nice. Um, let's keep going. Uh, let me ask this one. Okay. How will the battery last over time? Like, we get this question quite a bit. Are yeah. there any warranties that are uh, included as standard? So our warranty is eight years and a hundred thousand miles, whichever comes first. And we've been doing that for a long time now. Um, and we do that because the battery is really designed to outlast the car. Yeah. When we started the Tesla, we were like, okay, well people, you know, you don't want to maintain your cars. You want to deal with it. And the battery is one of the things we thought about. Um, of course, you know, all lithium ion batteries at some point lose some little bit of range over time, but we work to minimize that by monitoring the temperature of the battery and make sure when you're charging, you're keeping it at a nice constant temperature. And I mean, if you look at the, the stats, like from external, you know, third party people, they always say our batteries perform the best over life of yeah. the car. They're not losing like 30% range. They're losing like single digits, maybe 10% over, you know, those eight years. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, let's keep going. Um, are there any elements of the car that can help with the range? Well, we talked about a lot of these already. Yeah, we did. We covered it. I think the aero efficiency, you know, I think a CD of 0 0.219. 219. It's like the lowest um, efficiency. It's the lowest overall drag. Exactly. Right? So CDA, drag is yep. drag times area. Model S is technically slicker. Right. 206, but it's a little bit bigger. Right. So it has a little bit more and drag. CDA is a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, but so that's one one element, and you know another element we talked about was the wheels. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, actually a big contributor as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, and then just you know continuing to, um, you know, innovate in the battery space. Yeah. And just put improvements back into the cells. I mean, when we put energy into the cells, we're doing that constantly. I mean, the other thing we work on a lot is low power consumption. I think through yeah. our buddy. He uh, committed to next month or this month, I guess, coming up with a 40% reduction in, in sentry mode over time. Yeah. And I think really low voltage and, and consumption overall is something we focus on at a granular level. So, I mean, if you're driving and what can you do, you know, like, you know, it's really about how you drive. I think the, le the people that don't realize that the biggest effect on range is like how fast you want to hit that accelerator yeah. pedal, yeah. you know, uses more power when you're accelerating. So if you try and be a little gentle. I mean, it's... Hard not to do in this car. It's hard right? not but to do. It's like it's, it's and it's quieter, yeah. so you just want to go faster. But yeah, you gotta, you know, you can keep you can keep it. I mean, in that's it. another actually element. It doesn't have to do with range, but it's something of you know about the overall feel of the car. It's incredibly quiet inside the car. Wind noise is down, so even though the wind is passing over, it's not making a lot of noise. You want to get inside and like talk that. about it a little bit? I guess we could. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I'll go around this. Yeah. And I think you know, talking about the interior a little bit more, you can see that it's a. All new. There's, you know, we, we we've added a lot of improvements. We have a center console now with closed compartments. We've got ambient lighting that wraps around, so it's really kind of taken the idea of this wraparound cockpit. Um, we've upgraded everything in the steering wheel. Actually, one thing you may notice is that we removed the stocks. Again, talking about efficiency and taking 
um, parts away that are not necessarily required. We put indicators right on in the same way that you would indicate with a stock that are on the steering wheel um, and just improved UI. This car comes with an amazing user interface. I think that's just like something that we don't talk enough about, but there's so much packed into that one screen, um, whether it's, you have like almost infinite um, music and podcasts. Yeah, you can and get whatever you, you know, ab you ability want. and super high quality. There's 17 speakers in this car? Yeah, in the dual motor, there's 17 speakers. It's actually more than we went out with. It yeah. used to be 14. In the base vehicle, we also added two low power subs. So you get went from seven speakers and no subs, or woofers, I should say, not really subs, but low, low uh, to nine speakers and two woofers. So, I mean, I think that's another thing, our sound quality. Like, if you're an audiophile, buy this car. Yeah, absolutely. Like, or at least go test drive Thank one, you. sit in it, and like hear it. It is amazing. I think even just when you sit in it and you close the door, and you can just hear this thud when you're sitting inside of it, it just feels solid. And then when you're actually driving, wind noise is down. You, got, you, you guys did a lot of work on the glass, too, right? We did. To improve the that, glass so. is all acoustic. We have, you know, this question actually, let's talk, can I go to this? I just saw it pop up. You know, are there any, like, looks the same, what looks the same as the old Model 3, but actually is not? So we got a lot of questions about, like, did you use Giga castings and, and all this stuff? And, and like, we didn't, be, really, because we wanted to come to market, and we had a lot of CapEx invested in the body lines. We got to go quick to change them over, you know? And I, I think, you know, underneath, we still changed a lot. Yeah. You know, from an NVH perspective, any area that was a little bit weak, we added a stiffener, or we changed the brackets so that it was more stiff. We added, you know, more baffles and things to absorb noise. We added, of course, the frequency selective damping I've been talking about, which is super cool. Basically, has a bypass valve in it that on low frequencies, like the pressure builds up so much that valve won't open, but on high frequencies, it allows flow to flow through, really adds comfort. Those things you can't see, right? Yeah. And that, that's, that's just cool, you know, benefits you get in a car that weren't there. And those are the things I always, you know, when we're down here, we talk about doing too, because both you and I, like our teams, we really care about the whole product. Yeah. It's not just like, what does it look like? So, um, Anything you want to add to that one? or No, I, I mean, I think that's great. Maybe one more question? Yeah, I think we got a time for one or two more. Um, oh, rear-wheel drive, being a rear-wheel drive vehicle, how is the traction? Um, this is a question I get a lot, yeah. um, actually, and, you know, I, I think that there's a misnomer about rear-wheel drive and traction, especially in the snow. Um, one of the things that helps us out initially, and I think that comes from a few things, you know, in IC engines, the, the weight was up front, and the motor was, and drive wheels were in the, or the drive wheels were in the back, so you didn't have a lot of load on that. Our cars are pretty close to 50-50, um, so we do have a lot of mass on the rear to give it traction. And mass down low too, right? Mass down low, so you're not like tipping and sliding and moving yeah. all over. But the other thing is, um, you know, traction is really just a function of slip. Like how much is the wheel slipping? And on, you know, snow and low mu and things like that, it can slip a lot. But with our motors, which can react in like 10 milliseconds, we can control that slip, you know, 100 times a second. In an ICE vehicle, you have to like build torque, send it through the drive system, let the shafts wind up. It right. can take a quarter second. Yeah. So even if you sense slip, you're not able to respond very right. quickly. And you can see that. I think that we've posted videos of this before, but you can climb up a hill in a rear-wheel drive in the snow, no problem. Yeah. Um, as long as you have the right tires. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, and I just, this one go. I just kind of answered. How does the Model 3 rear-wheel drive perform in the snow and rain? So I'm going to skip that one and go to the next one. I think we got time for maybe two more. Um, we can talk inside, you, maybe this one's for you, Franz. We talked a little bit about the ambient lighting, but why did you decide to do that? What inspired you to go with it? Well, I think the thing that we wanted to just really uh, improve on was the overall cabin ambiance. And I think, you know, we had this theme of really the, the cockpit kind of surrounding you, and we just wanted to enhance that with, with lighting, which actually you can configure on the screen with just a, a button. So you, any color, whatever your preference is, um, it could be yours. So you can yeah. really change the mood of the, the interior um, as your mood changes, uh, yeah. if, if that's how you roll. Um, but I think it was just you know really about elevating the overall experience. I think it adds and to the premiumness inside does, of all yeah. the other materials. Exactly, and I think that combined with what Lars said, the, the textile, um, you know, the improved um, air blade system for air delivery, the HVAC system, which is kind of a magical experience. It's, it's invisible. And, you know, we incorporated that with seat venting now, too. Exactly. So yeah, our HVAC venting. is all, yeah. like, integrated together, and it's all auto. The seat vents is really cool for me, too. I was, so heated and cooled seats. Yeah, that's right. In an all-new seat design, which is actually more comfortable, and more comfortable in the rear. So we are And when the ambient light goes all the way back, too, it's just a really premium. Yeah. I think a lot of people have commented on that. I'm going to geek out on the seats for a second. 
a lot of people make ventilated seats. At Tesla, we design our own seats in-house. Franz has a team back there that stitches up the patterns. Like, nobody else does this. But what it allowed us to do on the vents was, like, we actually create a tighter seal, more flow through the foam with Mueller mesh and everything. So our seats, while most, like, ventilated seats can barely just keep you at the temperature that you sit down in, ours actually wick temperature away yeah. from you. When you sit on them, you actually feel yourself getting cooler. And that's integrated into the... And pretty quickly, yeah, too. Yeah, pretty quickly, yeah. too. Yeah, almost twice as fast as most, most uh, um, companies do. So that's a pretty cool feature. And, and I really like that it's integrated with the HVAC. And so, like, yeah. if you're putting the AC on, it knows you want it, it cools you down. And we're trying to uh, really make it, like, the least amount of input that you could have. Yeah, low, low user input equals just better overall experience. Yeah, super cool. All right, let's see. I think we got time for maybe two more, one more. Um, this one's kind of cool. We haven't even talked about the rear. Yeah. But it says, can the rear seat passengers use Bluetooth headphones to watch content on the screen? Why don't you hop back there? And One thing you can, you can see in the back is that we've added an uh, eight-inch touchscreen for the back. Exactly. So now customers in the rear can control their own climate. They can watch movies. My kids love it because they get to watch movies um, or our Netflix or YouTube videos or whatever. And you can put the headphones on. It works. And now they yeah. can connect via Bluetooth, and they don't bother me which is great. Um, they can watch all their crazy stuff. Um, and so it's just a great uh, overall experience and gives the rear seat a little bit more premium feel, a little bit more affordance and control like, uh, over what's happening in the back. It really makes a family sedan like more of a family thing. Yeah, and absolutely. We, you know, one of the things our customers complained about was the second row experience in the Model 3. Like we wanted to make it better. And beyond that, we also changed the seats to be more comfortable. Right. Increase the incline so you feel a little bit more relaxed. Yep. Add a little more bolstering on the bottom to support the hips. It's like you know, just all the little things. All those little things, but they still fold flat, and so you can still yeah. load a bunch of stuff through the rear trunk um, and and get you know a really functional vehicle as well. It's a lot of space, yeah, man. It's a ton of space. I love this car. I mean, it's our second <laughs> chance at it, but I think we did it a lot better. All right. Um, well, I think this last one we maybe already talked about. Can you highlight some of the updated features in the interior? We've been talking about that for a little bit. Um, I guess a one thing I'll add, you know, we talked about the, the cabin quietness, but we actually added some sealing in the doors, um, increased our secondary seal stiffness, changed these muckets and everything so that the sealing is actually much better at high speed. Um, Germany actually talked about that from time to time. Yeah, again, I think you really will, we, we, we can talk about it, but if you go and do a test drive in this car, you'll, you'll notice how quiet it is. It doesn't feel like any other car at this price point, for sure. I mean, like, I've been in the car industry for a long time now, over 20-some 20, 20 years, and at this price point, like, there's not a better car out there. And with the tax credits and stuff, it gets yeah. really low, you know, lease stuff. It's really, really a great car to buy. I know we're, we're starting to sound like sales. I mean, I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, I think what we did was we created a really beautiful um, car that is just packed with just it's amazing with engineering... Stuff. Feats that just makes an overall great driving experience, great ownership experience. I mean, and all these um, things just come with it. It's not like you're yeah. buying packages yeah, on packages. Exactly. You don't buy the tech package or the audio package. You get the sound system. Yeah. It comes with it. So, I mean, go out there, test drive one. You know, um, it's worth checking it out. This this car is in our ultra red. We also have another new color called Stealth Gray, and then um, we have you know different color interiors as well. So, come check it out. I think it's worth a drive. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll be blown away. Yeah. I mean, I, this last question we've been answering the whole time, but it, we're, guys are telling us we're almost out of time, so we're going to sign off. But we really appreciate everyone. Um, we'll try and do this more often. Yeah, this is great. Fun time talking to Franz. Hope you learned a little bit about it. I did. You know? <laughs> I mean, every time I talk to you, I learned something new. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks.